Hey, welcome back to Drowning in Yarn. I'm Caleb. It's been well over a month since I posted my review of Mondim by Retrosario, which is a 100% wool sock yarn. And in that video, I said I'd wear the socks that I knit for 30 days straight, just to see how they stand up. Spoiler alert, I did not wear my socks for 30 days because I found two holes in the socks on day 16. So in this video, I want to take you on a journey as I learn to mend my socks because I've never done that before, mend them, and perhaps share some insights into how to take better care of your hand-knit socks. So if you're interested in sock durability, then stick around and I wanna share everything I learned. I wanted to show you what the socks look like after wearing them for 16 days and getting two holes in them. So each sock got one hole and I'm not surprised where the holes appeared. I'm not gonna lie to you, I have rough patches on my feet. I always have and I just don't do foot care, as embarrassing as that may be to say, and maybe I need to start because where those patches of rough skin on my feet are, are where the holes appeared. On one of the socks, I got a hole on the bottom of the big toe. That part of the sock sort of slides up onto the side of my toe and it rubs against my skin. And so that hole makes sense to me. And now I know the toe is a weak point for me and I should reinforce that a little bit. And then the other sock got a hole kind of just below the toe in, I don't know what part of the foot that's called, maybe the pad of my foot. That's where that other hole happened. Neither of the socks though got holes in the heels, which I've always thought was a space where I really needed to pay extra attention. But <laughs> thinking about it, my commercial socks always get holes in the toes as well, usually on the top where my big toe touches the front of my shoes. I have a tendency to buy shoes like a little too small. It's like a chronic issue. The way that I wore these during those 16 days was around the house with no shoes on in Birkenstocks. Then I wore them in tennis shoes to the gym. Those three things I think were all just totally wrong. So I have hardwood floors, no carpet, and wearing your socks against the hardwood, there's nothing holding the sock against your foot. So your foot sliding around in there not great. And then I wore them in Birkenstocks, which also kind of simulate that because there's nothing holding the Birkenstock in place on my foot like a shoe might, which would be fine if it wasn't also combined with that on wood floors. But I think the real problem was wearing them to the gym. I've been doing Orange Theory for the past four or five months. I went to multiple classes a week wearing these socks. I don't run <laughs> most of the time because I can't. So I was walking on the treadmill at a really steep incline. So it was like I was walking up a hill for, you know, 30 minutes. And then the other part of that hour that I'm at the gym, I was either on a rower or doing just all kinds of weird movements. And I got holes in 16 days. But I just want to reiterate, this is not my experience with this yarn. I think this is my experience with 100% wool socks. And the fact of the matter is, they just may not be for me, but they may be for you. I reached out to a couple people on Instagram that I trust that said that they had knit 100% wool socks and they had nothing but great things to say. They said they love their 100% wool socks. One of my Instagram friends said that he goes hiking in them. So he puts them in boots and goes hiking and he's had them for years and never had a problem. So. I think it's just me and my feet and the bad choices I made, but I'm gonna take this opportunity to learn. Tonight and tomorrow, I'm gonna do a little bit of research, learn how to fix these socks and repair them. I went to the gym and came home anxious to start learning about how to mend socks and I laid down on the floor in front of the fan like I always do and I started watching YouTube videos about how to mend socks. The next day I was watching more YouTube videos and I actually watched videos for a few days because I just had such a mental block about fixing these socks. And I kind of came across three different methods for mending socks that I thought were interesting. So first there was darning, which is sort of weaving a patch onto your fabric. Then there was actually knitting a patch by picking up stitches just below the hole, knitting a patch, and then sewing that down. 
That has the benefit of matching your fabric best, so it's gonna stretch and wear the same as your fabric originally did. And then the third thing was Swiss darning, which is less of a technique for fixing holes and more of a technique for preventing holes whenever you see that your fabric is starting to wear thin. After learning about these three techniques, it was a few more days before I actually put any of them into practice. And my first thought was that I was just gonna knit patches for both of these socks because I'm most comfortable with knitting and I don't know, I just didn't want to do something new. I just had a mental block about mending these socks in the first place and I thought that would be the path of least resistance. So after I thought about it for a few days and got past that mental block that I had, I decided that I should try two different types of mending since I had two different holes. So for the first sock with the hole under the big toe, I decided to mend that one by darning. So I just followed the instructions in some of the videos that I've linked down below in the description of this video and went about darning this sock. It was my first time doing it and the whole process took roughly 15 minutes from beginning to end. So darning resulted in a mended fabric that looks fairly different from the knit fabric, but that's not so bad when it's in a less visible place on your knitted item, like the bottom of a sock. Nobody's gonna see it, and it results in a really durable patch. And then on the other sock, the one with the hole sort of on the bottom of the foot, just below where the toe of the sock is, I decided to knit a patch. This was a process that I mean, if you know how to knit, then you really don't need to, to learn much about this, but it was very helpful to watch tutorials online, just so I felt a little more comfortable going into it. So I just picked up some stitches below the hole. I knit a patch flat, and then I sewed that back down to the sock. So it's very stretchy, though around that hole, it's definitely thicker because I have the original fabric that is a little bit thinner because that's where the hole resulted, and then the patch on top of that. But in the bottom of the foot, you don't really notice when you're standing on it. So the fact that it was a little thick didn't really matter. I won't lie, I didn't really take a lot of care in sewing it down. So though the knitted patch has the potential to look more like your original fabric, in my instance, it doesn't look great, but it's on the bottom of the sock. So I didn't think that was that big of a deal. But if I were to mend sort of more visible portion of a project, like the elbow of a sleeve on a sweater, I would probably do a knitted patch and just take a lot more time to make sure that I sew that down well so that it looks really good. At the end of the day, I think both techniques were so easy. The darning was a lot quicker at 15 minutes. The knitted patch took me roughly 30-ish minutes, but still really quick. Both of them resulted in what I think are very wearable socks. Both mins are on the bottom of the feet and neither feels weird whenever I'm wearing the sock and standing on them. And both resulted in what feels like more reinforced fabric. So I feel really good about this mending that I did on these socks. But then whenever I was looking at these socks to kind of examine my handiwork and just make sure there was nothing else going wrong with them, I did notice that just below the heel, there was a spot that was wearing a little bit thinner. So I did some Swiss darning here, which is really just duplicate stitch. So you're just taking your same yarn and duplicate stitching over the existing stitches just to reinforce them so that instead of mending a hole that appeared, you prevent that hole in the first place. And I think that's a really, really great technique. And whenever you're washing your socks, it seems like a really good habit to examine them to notice the thin areas before they turn into holes and reinforce them then so that you never have to fix holes. You're just sort of preventing them in the first place. So I think this is a habit I'm gonna get into, particularly with these 100% wool socks. Though, like I said, I'm not sure 100% wool socks are for me. I tend to be fairly rough on my clothes and I tend to be fairly careless when it comes to taking care of them. So I think 
having that nylon is gonna result in socks that are gonna be more hard wearing for me. I've been knitting socks for a couple years now, and these socks are the first I've ever gotten holes in. Granted, they're the only ones I've ever worn to the gym in the way that I did, but I still think with the way that I am on my clothes and on my hand knits, that nylon is gonna provide me at least with a little more peace of mind. The other thing that this whole kind of saga of these 100% wool socks kind of brought to the forefront of my mind was this idea of wearing my garments. It was really nice to wear these socks around every day for 16 days. And I'll be totally honest and say, I knit a lot of socks and I don't often wear them. I kind of treat them like they're precious and I treat them like they're these like treasures, but I knit them to wear them and I need to do that. And having these new skills, knowing how to mend them, knowing that it's not that big of a deal and it can take as little as 15 minutes to do, gives me a little bit more peace of mind. I am spending all this time and all this money learning how to make these beautiful hand knit things and I need to enjoy them. And they're not disposable, so I know I need to learn how to take better care of them but there's no point in doing all this if I'm not gonna enjoy them. So that's sort of where I landed with this 100% wool sock journey. Thank you so much for your patience waiting for this update if you had been. I know that I said I would do this a long time ago and I just, I had a mental block about taking care of these socks and then reporting back and I don't know why. So I appreciate your patience. I appreciate you being here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the little like button down below and hit that little subscribe button if you haven't already. I love to make entertaining, informative, and inspiring videos about knitting and yarn and I hope you'll stick around to see what I have coming up in the future. But until next time, I'm going to get back to my knitting and I will see you all later.